Welcome back to AP Statistics. I'm not affiliated with the College Board. I teach high school statistics where I'm known as Dr. Kling. And today's topic is called failure models. Let's see if I can write that. Failure models. And that it's an extension of the problem of the multiplication rule for independent events. So let me give and remember the that when we have identical binary independent events, so we'll do, I do I'll remember it's binary, two possible outcomes, an identical probability of success in each, for each possible trial, so that's P, and then uh, there are also independent events, and the probability of n successes, so the probability of n successes is p to the n. We, we learned that last time. And we're going to sort of apply some variations on that today to talk about uh, the probability of getting all successes or no successes. Uh, or not all successes or not all failures. And that's why I call this a failure model. So let's look at this is uh, an article on the B 17 bomber. And this is a B 17 bomber that evidently made it back even though not all of its components succeeded. So the B 17 bomber had four engines and uh, with and let's let's make let's assume that it fits into our failure model uh, uh, example. So let's say for each engine, the probability that the engine w stayed intact was 0.8. Remember, it was a bomber going over enemy territory, so maybe each engine had only 80% chance. And then let's make some other extreme assumptions. It's probably not realistic. Assume that the engines fail, succeed or fail independently of one another. So we can apply the independent story. Um, and that each engine has an identical chance of failure, uh, identical chance of success. So this is the probability of success. And let's make an assumption that the plane gets back if one or more of the four engines of the four engines succeeds and so now we want to know well what's the probability that this plane gets back so let me write down Remember, we had the probability for one engine succeeding was 0.8. And let me write down some uh, some expressions. I'm going to write down four of them. I'll write down one, two, three, four. Okay, so this will be p to the n. Now watch parentheses carefully. Uh, where there are parentheses and where there are not parentheses. This is 1 minus p to the n. Now, here I'm going to put, throw in some parentheses. 1 minus p to the n. Okay, so note that, this, that these two are different because of the parentheses. And I'm going to do 1 minus 1 minus p to the n. Okay, and let's see what each of these expressions means. So, uh, in the case of our bomber, n is equal to 4. So, what this means, this gives us the probability that all four engines work. So, all four engines succeed. All four of them work. That's, so, 0.8 times 0.8 times 0.8 times 0.8. Now, 1 minus p to the n means not all 
for work. So that means at least one fails. Now that could be an interesting answer to uh, to one type of to some types of problems. It just doesn't happen to be the answer to this problem. Uh, but something it could be the answer to would be a an old-fashioned set of lights collected in series, where if one light bulb went out, the whole uh, string of light bulbs would go out. Another example potentially could be a, a, a single elimination tournament like March Madness. But there, the, the problem is you can't assume that the probabilities of winning in each round are identical and independent. But if you could, then uh, you, if you don't win every round, then you don't win the, the whole tournament. And so it would be a 1 minus p to the n would be the answer there. 1 minus p to the n is the probability that uh, all fail, that all the engines fail. And then 1 minus per n, 1 minus p to the n, is the probability that not all fail, at least one works. Works. And this is our answer. That, that's what we want to find out because that's going to give a, tell us the probability that the airplane will actually get back. Okay, so hang on just a second here. Okay, so now I've set up a spreadsheet where we have, uh, I can input n, the number of engines, P, the probability that each engine succeeds, and then we'll calculate the four things we just talked about. P to the n, 1 minus P to the n, parentheses 1 minus P to the n, and then 1 minus 1 minus P to the n. So let's do that. Okay, and then, we, then the calculations will show up here. So we we'll have four engines. Probability of any engine succeeding is 0.8. And here are all our probabilities. So this is the probability that all four engines work. This is not all work, meaning at least one fails. This is all four fail. And this is not all four fail, so at least one works. And that's, uh, that gives us the example of the calculations. And now if we wanted to see what would happen if we had six engines that worked like this, we could put in six. And what do you think will happen? Do you think there's more of a chance that we'll come back? Presumably yes. If we put in six engines, we did have a 99.84 chance of succeeding before. Now we have a 0.9999 chance of succeeding. Uh, let's put in... Uh, 4 with only a 60% chance. Now there's still that now where there's a bit more of a chance that uh, not all four will, will fail. Um, sorry, there's a bit less of a chance. There's a bit more of a chance that not all four will fail here, and a bit less of a chance that the plane will get back. So that's uh, that's failure models, and uh, next time. I think what I'll do next time. What I think I'll, I'll do next time is a problem where we have to solve for n. That is, we, we're given p and we're given, say, a target value for one of these probabilities about the system, and we solve for n. So that's what we'll save for next time.